Sharif Snugs, what's up? Shave your knuckles for justice. Trump calling out Pelosi will land. I'm sad to say I know people in my circle who will vote that way. No, I mean, so yeah, let's let's get into let's get into some of the specifics. Let's get here. into uh, the specifics. Where do you think? I mean, obviously the polls are saying, oh, Biden's in the lead, Biden's in the lead, but the polls four years ago said Hillary was in the lead. <laughs> so um where do you think where do you think you know Trump landed a few and where do you think Biden landed a few? Well, I'll say this. I think that, you know, and every single rebuttal Trump had, every single one. I mean, let let's let's put this on the table once and for all. And I, and I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir, uh, you know, on, on this show, but you know, if there's anyone who's, uh, who's, uh, who's not sure, let, let's make it clear once and for all. Lee camp wrote a pretty good article in uh, consortium news the other day of, of who to blame if, uh, if Donald Trump wins again. And uh, I'll tell you, I think tonight really proved beyond a shadow of the doubt, the person to blame is Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, and Joe Biden. Every single rebuttal that Donald Trump had, every single one of them, he could not have made any of those rebuttals if the candidate would have been Bernie Sanders. None of them. None of them. They, the, uh, they bring up corruption. He brings up Hunter. He brings up Wall Street. They bring up um, foreign policy. Biden will just be, sound more hawkish than him. They bring up health care. He'll bring up the disaster the ACA was and that Biden doesn't really have a plan to do anything about it and was ineffective for 40 years prior to that. They bring up racism. Trump can bring up the crime bill. This is what happens when you have a guy who has so many skeletons in his closet, he didn't need to decorate his yard for Halloween last week. It's already decorated. That's what happens. So, I mean, every single rebuttal Trump has, it's, it's because Biden's the, the candidate. It's because it's such a terrible opponent and Biden can't refute anything. Trump, once again, he attacked Biden from the left and the right at various times. And Biden just just didn't know what to do in that situation. He's like, he attacks him from the right. Well, well you can't raise the minimum wage. You can't do this. You, and then he attacks him from the left. Like, oh, well, you didn't do this and this. And you take money from Wall Street. Like he'll, you know, and Biden just kind of gets stuck in that. But um, Trump also completely hung himself a bunch of times. And I'll tell you, overall, I think the most memorable moment of this debate will be the moment where Joe Biden said, 525 kids are looking for their parents and Donald Trump said good. Yeah. That's going to be the freaking moment. And that was, and, and, you know, on their immigration again, the immigration, you know, Donald Trump is absolutely terrible, but Donald Trump will be able to deflect. And he did where he brings up, Hey, you and Obama built those cages. But then when Joe Biden brought that up and Trump said, good, that's going to be a big soundbite, man. We live in an era of soundbites. That will be the big soundbite. And that's going to be what people remember. Just like last time, they remembered the Proud Boys moment. I mean, Donald Trump did hang himself twice, big time, which is Biden's only chance. If Donald Trump, you know, shoots himself in the dick hard enough that he can't possibly recover. Right. It's not, nobody's excited about Joe Biden. They just really want to get Trump out of there. That's what right. all Biden really has. I mean, I think, <clears throat> I mean, you know, Trump landed a lot when he just kept saying, well, you had eight years. Why didn't you do this? You know, like that's, that was pretty strong. That was pretty compelling. But then there was just at the beginning when they were talking about COVID, that's where it felt like Biden was saying, you know, Biden can just keep saying 220,000 deaths, 220,000 deaths. And it's like, the thing that's different than four years ago is there's been 40 million votes cast by mail already. Like that's a yeah. record, record number. And I wonder how many of those are for Trump and, or are they just people who are like, we're done. We're so done with Trump. We're voting early. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's looking different than four years ago. Uh, you know, Hillary and her campaign were so cocky and so arrogant. The media was so arrogant and a bunch of people just stayed home and didn't vote. Whereas I've never seen this kind of a get out the vote movement. I mean, like I haven't seen this in a long, I, I don't know that I've ever seen it like this. And oh, I, think, I think you could say 2008 and right. you know, I mean, there was 
pretty much a landslide Obama victory in 2008. So, so yeah, and, and I think when it came to COVID, I mean, Biden did have his talking points lined up and, and he, he landed them pretty well there. Like, like he did, yeah. you know, and from a debate standpoint, he absolutely did. Um, I think that for the person really listening, it would also become apparently clear that neither one of them has any plan. Right. Like neither, neither one of them has a plan. That's the problem, you know, looking at a big picture. But I think from a debate standpoint, well, that still lands on the person who has the gig currently, which is Trump. So, yeah, I think that's where Biden, uh, you know, did land a lot. Um, I, I will say in foreign policy, it was an absolute disaster. For oh, Biden. God. I mean, that was disgusting just to listen to. I mean, that was unreal. I mean, I mean, he went to the right of Trump for foreign policy. It's unbelievable. Like, I mean, uh, gee, I, after this debate, I, I guess the only problems America has is China and Russia and North Korea. There's no other problems in the world right now. Other, I mean, they talked, they brought China and Russia up into, in the, they wove them into everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, this brainy virus and, and all this other stuff. And it's just like, again. Oh, and the just, Iran thing now. now. Now there's the Iran thing where it's like we. <laughs> and now mm -hmm. like all this time spent on North Korea. And that was the one area just showed how bad Biden looked. But again, the vote any blue will do people. You know, they're not anti-war, I guess, because, you know, I mean, the one thing. Trump Does the war happen in their backyard? Yeah. The, if the, if the war happened, yeah, that's it. If it didn't happen in their backyard, then they don't care because um, they don't matter. And like a leader going to meet with Kim Jong-un is a, is a, is a, I mean, there's so much of, I can be critical of Trump of and have sure. and will, but like when he met with Putin and everyone on the left goes, she Putin's his buddy. I'm like two superpowers who could wipe out life on planet earth are, are having a peace talk. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's like, a good thing. It doesn't mean that they're not both pricks. Yeah. But that's not the point. You don't have to like world leaders. It doesn't, right. they're not good people most like pretty much any of the time, but that's a row. You don't want them to go to war with each other. That's the point. Right. It's, and you know, the, the reality is too, the listen, we don't talk about North Korea is just so preposterous because on like four or five different occasions, North Korea has either back channeled or in sort of coded messages asked for help because they're dying financially, right? Their, their system is not like Cuba's communism actually can, has, has been able to open up and, and work and theirs hasn't. And so we could, we could talk them down very easily. They're well aware that we could wipe them off the map pretty, pretty quickly. Like, and, but all we got is war, 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 war. Like there's no, it's unbelievable just listening. And again, that's when Trump like came at Biden from the left and you're just like, God, it's, it's so, it's yeah. so disappointing that there's no anti-war option on that stage. Just there's, none. There's no chance. It's not even that there's no anti-war option. It's that how disgustingly repulsive is it? And, and it's, it goes beyond, I mean, it's our entire duopoly. It was even the moderator on the freaking stage. And it just shows you how insanely imperialistic uh, of a nation we are, at least in leadership. And it's like, how horrible on foreign policy do you have to be where you almost make the guy who it recently illegally assassinated a general look like a pacifist in comparison? Yeah, that's the United States, man. And it is beyond disturbing and beyond appalling. And it ain't going away anytime soon. No, that was so, so obvious is just like and Trump you know, is like, Oh, I've done so much for peace. And it's like, you're still bombing seven countries and Biden's yeah. not going to call Trump out for that because no. that's what he's doing. Cause he helped us get to seven wars. He's going to keep the bombing of the seven countries. Absolutely. He's going to keep the sanctions on Iran and Venezuela. We might even invade those countries if Biden's president. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane to me to just like, these are our options. These are our two options is the two guys that love war, the two parties yeah. that love war on a network that loves war. Uh, yep. in front of, yeah, exactly. it, it, it's just nuts, man. Well, it's, I mean, even the North Korea, thing, I mean, in 2015, there's that like really popular Noam Chomsky clip. I think he was on democracy now. And, and the, he was just talking about like, 
well, here's how we could solve our problem with North Korea. And he basically said, and this is a paraphrase because these were not the words Chomsky used, but this is basically what he very eloquently put. And I'm going to put it not as eloquently. He basically said, we could just stop being assholes to them. Right. That's right. basically what he said. He's like, we're intimidating them. We're flying our planes there. They ju they're just like, hey, can you not? I mean, yeah. it, it's making us uncomfortable. That's why we're still, I mean, we back, if you just don't want to, but we're like, what? Like shove, what? We could just be like, okay, we're going to bounce. That's cool. We're going to walk away too. We could just yeah. do that. Game over. <laughs> like, I mean, it's weird. You surround a small little country with a bunch of battleships that could wipe it off the earth in about nine minutes. And they act crazy. They act scared and nuts. It's weird. It's like weird reaction. If I surrounded your house with like 35 guys with armed weapons and just said, we just want to keep it safe. You'd be in your home going shit. Didn't, these you, guys get, are nuts. didn't you get the tweet we sent? These bombs have democracy in them. Did you not get that memo? We put rainbow flags on them this time. Did that make me feel <laughs> They're better? Green. They're green. They're green. They're green. Which greened them up. <laughs> right. They're, they're, they're funded by, you know, biodiesel. Is it, is it neat? Does that make you feel better?